Hello, welcome to another thoroughly amateurish blade review. This is nothing less than a clone, that's right, a clone of a custom called the Squirrel Master XL, or as I christened it on uh, the Chinese knife subreddit, the Squirrel Effer XL, for some reason it seems appropriate. Um, so let's look at the fit and finish first of all, which is just dynamite. I mean, look, look at that kind of uh, uh, belt, presumably, sort of like a ground finish they've done on the scales there. And also you've got the uh, these uh, just really attractive grooves um, machined into the handle. Um, lanyard hole, essential. Uh, uh, thumb disc, which looks awesome, uh, but we'll touch on that a bit later which the bits which are less awesome um how's it for uh on, on the, yeah on the clip side you know clip side uh, back side uh, it looks really clean right I, th I think it looks kind of like a a little bit futuristic a little bit kind of cyberpunk maybe kind of steampunk right because you, you, you've got some kind of uh, some you know the, the blade is almost completely hidden which i, I find really cool in life but then you've got these kind of lovely curves uh, nothing organic about it. It looks very kind of steampunky to me. Uh, the blade is a chunky one. I'm getting some measurements in a bit. I, lo I love the uh, the lock bar relief too. So whipping are open. Um, nice deployment. Um, so it's a bit dirty there. This is an amateur review after all. And you've got. It's one of the reasons I got it. You know, there's this crazy grind going on. Now I didn't actually realise this bit. Um, which I think looks really, really ugly. Uh, I forgot to check if the OG Squirrel Effer has that one. Uh, I, I just really dislike it. I, I don't know why it's there because I, I, as far as I can tell, there's no changing grind. It's, it's, it's just a drop point, it's not a tanto. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, but yeah, just really, really cool blade. Um, I, I love fullers as well, so it's like right up my alley. Um, so what are the measurements on this guy? So I've got a medium large hand and I have to say that ergos are great um, and that's partly because of this curved um, butt here. So there's, I find that a lot of knives make the mistake of making that angular and it juts into your palm when you're, when you're you know, you know, pushing hard on something. And this one, it does push in a bit because it, it's, it's quite squared off in cross section, but it, 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 it's fine, it's fine. And that, this feels really good. And this is despite uh, an OAL of, um, I got it down here as six and seven eighths. Um, yeah, that's about right, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not a big knife, but it might be seven or something. Uh, um, it's not a big knife, um, but it, 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 does a, it, it must be seven or seven eighths. Um, because the blade is, um, well, no, the blade is uh, three inches, so it's probably six and seven eighths. I'll shut up. Um, three inch blade, overall length six and seven eighths. I measured this myself. Um, the um, handle length is three and three quarter inches. Um, and like I said, I've got medium large, meaning like, you know, sort of in between large and medium. And this feels great. Uh, you can't really choke up. I, I guess you could, that feels fine actually. If you want just a bit more, you know, power or control. Um, it just feels really good. And uh, the pocket clip does a good job of not sticking into your palm. Um, it's coming in at three and a half ounces, which is pretty good. And you think to yourself, well, it's a real chonker, right? How does it do that? Well, the obvious answer is the internal milling, right? Which hopefully you can see right there and right there, yeah. Um, how's the action? Well, when I got it, I couldn't open it. And that's because one of the, probably the major downside for me, and I'm putting my finger there so my camera will actually tr focus on it. The jimping is just not aggressive enough. It's as simple as that. It needs to be either pointier or, you know, deeper grooves, you know, some combination of. Um, it looks awesome, but it isn't awesome, sadly. And I like thumb discs. I'm a big thumb disc proponent, but uh, they got this wrong, in my opinion. Um, so I, I basically disassembled it and uh, um, I reduced the lock bar tension 
So I basically bent the uh, the lock bar outwards about uh, about a millimeter, I think, and then uh, it became actually really enjoyable. Um, but still, it's just slippery. It, it's like, come on, man, what are you, what, what are you thinking? But uh, you can do it, and it pops out lovely, even with the reduced lock bar tension, and it drops really nice too. Not the biggest snick when it closes, but you know, it's all right. Uh, and then for lefties like myself, see, uh, my finger slipped up up the uh, up the disc there. There you go. Right. And then how's how's the Spidey? Excellent. But the same deal. Uh, you know, initially I could not Spidey flick it for love nor money. Now, once I reduce the tension, easy peasy. So if you're not like comfortable with disassembling knives, I would not recommend this. Maybe I got a weird one. But uh, just, just a word of caution there. Um, what else are we looking at? I paid $74 for it when it was uh, in one of those Ali sales. Um, and it's D2 and uh, all TI. Uh, I think that's okay. Um, I, it's so distinctive. Oh, good lock bar access, by the way. Look, they've, they've done a nice job there. And the lock bar is not super stiff. I got a Tucson recently, a beautiful Tucson. But the lock bar, oh my God. It, it, you felt like you were kind of like, uh, I don't know, well, it was very stiff. I, I couldn't think of an analogy there. Right, so uh, you got the disc is uh, is bad. Uh, fit and finish is superb, like really superb. Um, ergos are good. The action's good. Uh, the initial tension was bad. Uh, there's no logos anywhere that I can see. There you go. So you you have to think before you flick it. You have to remember to push down hard before you flick it, and that that's that's bad, right? You should, you should just open. I, yeah, there, I don't. I don't see any logos, um, which which is just like a, absolutely amazing. That's very rare, um, especially with your small puddings and whatnot on the market. Um, and um, you know, a disappointment, but you know, kind of comes with the design a bit. Really, is you can't flick the fuller, and, I, and I'm an expert at finding fullers you can flick that you're not supposed to flick. For example, uh, the Miso, these the amazing. I think it's Tigros design this one. I think right. Um, and this one, just very briefly, I know I'm going a bit off piece here, it's one of my favourite groovies. Uh, you're not supposed to flick this one, but um, if you get your finger in there and push upwards, oh, there you go, you can do it. So um, that's my kind of like thing, but this one is, is just so tucked out of the way. And I feel that, you know, it's, all, it's, it's clearly kind of like an aesthetic thing, right? It's like, you know, you've got these kind of grooves here, uh, and they kind of sort of continue up the fuller. Uh, but it would have been nice to be able to flick the fuller because uh, I don't know, I'm weird. Um, oh yeah, blade stock is chunky. It's four millimeters or uh, eighth of an inch. Um, I haven't tried cutting with it because this is one of my nicer knives, uh, <laughs> even though it's a seventy dollar clone. That's the way I'm living. Um, so there we have it, the Squirrel Master XL. Oh, the the uh, cloner was Lemifshi. Lemif. Lem if she, or Lem if she, or, or something like that. L E M I F S H E. Um, 74 bucks or thereabouts. Um, overall, recommended. Uh, if you can, you know, tolerate like a not great designed opening mechanism. All right, that's enough for this amateurish gibberish. Uh, take it easy.